G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, sad day evening here in Australia and obviously sort of sad day morning over in the States and that. <laughs> and of course, I go against what I normally do and I bought on a Friday afternoon and literally within, I don't even think it was an hour, the market took a turn and went the other way. Now it has rallied back a little bit. So this was down around about 18,000 sort of 600. Uh, but it was, again, up around kind of the $19,300, $19,400 level. So, <laughs> you know, another lesson learned for me is, you know, don't go against, you know, your, you know, kind of rules that you've, you know, tend to abide by. Look, you know, rules are, are meant to be changed sometimes, i.e. maybe even broken. But this wasn't good for me. I bought XRP at about 64 65 cents. Uh, and it dropped down to, I think, about 55, 56 cents. But I did rebuy it at 56 cents. So, you know, again, in a bull market, if it dips, buy the dip. That's exactly what I did. Uh, what else? Stella. So I bought some Stella. I think it was around about sort of 18 cents, 20 cents, something like that when I bought it. And it dipped. Uh, and I bought it, I think, for around about 16, maybe 15 cents. So, again... I just bought the dip, you know, I am in a solid belief that we are in a bull market. So if I buy something uh, and it goes down, as long as i got cash on the side and I still have some cash on the side, I just buy some more. I basically double up because we're in a bull market, uh, in a bull market, you know, most things just generally go back up anyway. So I'm not too worried. Long term, I'm quite confident I'll be fine. But anyway, that's what I did. And likewise with Bitcoin. I think I bought Bitcoin at around about uh, 18700 18600 thereabouts. I can't remember the exact price. Uh, but yeah, it's gone up a little bit, which is good. Uh, but, you know, not a whole lot. But what we can see, market cap. So down around that $569 billion, We're still, you know, sort of nowhere near that $800 billion that we were sort of you know, flirting with for a while there and definitely not near the 600 and the 700. But look, there's always going to be corrections and we're going to look at the price and I'm going to give you my opinion of what I think is happening. But gas prices come down a little bit. I think most people are kind of staked already. Uh, I haven't staked any yet. Uh, I'm going to in, you know, probably the new year. Uh, there's uh, a piece of kit that I need to buy to do the staking and I'll have a look at that uh, in a sort of future video. BTC dominance still just sitting around that kind of 61% level. It was 61.2, I think, yesterday, and now 61.8. Again, roughly 61, 62%. All right, let's have a look. What about big winners and big losers? There's still some pretty decent winners. Elrond, there we go, up 11%. Uh, Nexo, 9.2%. And again, these coins have done amazing over seven days. So Synthetics Network uh, has gone up, which is good. Uh, but it's, you know, highly you know, uh, fluctual. I don't know if that's even a word, but yeah, kind of up, down and all over where it was just rocketing up uh, when I first got into it, which is really good. Sushi, uh, again, just kind of goes from strength to strength, but we can see it's had a little bit of a pullback there. Uh, Bitcoin gold, there you go. Uh, you know, rising tide lifts all ships. Uh, so a couple of, uh, you know, greens really only, you know, a couple, maybe these kind of top three, uh, you know, reasonable ones. Again, you know, higher single digits to even a, a one double digit there. What about uh, losses though? Is there any losses and, you know, more so any of mine, uh, some of the big losses. All right. Uh, yeah, so some double digit losses there definitely happen. They're still up over seven days though. So again, this is just, you know, the way the market goes. Uh, Ren, so that's unfortunate. Ren is down, but you know, still up over the seven days, so I can't complain. And Stella, there we go. Of course, it was going to have a correction uh, from where it went. And look, if Stella goes down again, I'll buy some more. Algorand, again, but like nothing too major. You know, a couple get into the double digits, but they're not high double digits. So, you know, typical weekend retracement. As I said, it can sort of start around about a Thursday. Uh, and happen all the way through to kind of Monday morning sometimes. And most weekends, there's a retracement. It's not always though, but it's fairly regular. All right, a couple of interesting stories. So people are panicking, you know, probably, you know, with Bitcoin and all the rest of it. Oh my God, it's gone down, you know, uh, and it just won't break that $20,000 level. Guess who doesn't care? MicroStrategy buys more Bitcoin at average price above 19400 
this is big business. This is one of the early, you know, first kind of big business movers on Bitcoin. They're still buying. I can almost guarantee, uh, sorry, not MicroStrategy, this is MicroStrategy. Uh, Grayscale are still buying. Um, who is that? Skybridge are probably still buying. You know, I can almost guarantee uh, PayPal and Square Cash App and all that are still buying. It is still cheap. Yes, there's gonna be fluctuations. They're gonna try and shake people out. That's what they do. Uh, and I'm not saying specifically micro strategy, but big business uh, and you know whales and that, they're definitely gonna try and shake people out. And even exchanges, when there's a lot of people trying to long it, you can guarantee that they're gonna dump a whole stack of it to kill all the shorts, uh, all the long, sorry, uh, and then they'll pump it to also uh, kill all the shorts. That's what they do. They you know can manipulate the markets like that. I'm not saying they do it all the time, but it's not uncommon. Uh, and again, at the moment, I just don't think too many people are going to try and manipulate the market too much. The buying pressure is too much. It's there. As soon as Bitcoin dips down, it just gets bought up. All right. Here, this was an interesting one. Three reasons why Bitcoin price is about to crash. Uh, look, will it sell off? Yeah, of course it will. People are going to take profit. That's what they do. That is the whole name of the game. But crash? I don't see any crashes happening for a while. We're just getting some high volatility at the moment and we've been here before and done things like this before. It is most likely that we will move to the upside, but it's not guaranteed. We just need to always keep that in the back of our mind. There is an absolute possibility we could dump 30, 40% or something like that. It's a possible, but it's an unlikely. There's just too much uh, you know, retail sort of FOMO, sorry, institutional FOMO at the moment. And look, only the big early players are really, you know, getting into it at the moment. You know, the other retail uh, FOMO, that hasn't even started yet. That happens after we've confirmed the 20,000. And then we wait for the retail FOMO. The retail FOMO is not even in yet. It's not even close. Retail FOMO won't start till Bitcoin's probably, you know, 50,000, 100,000 or something like that. And that's when everyone else is going to go absolutely spastic and crazy on it. Uh, and look, we need that us, us early adopters. And, you know, depending on your methodology, at some stage, you'll probably want to take some profits. I know I'm going to take some profits. I won't be selling too much Bitcoin. I will likely sell some. I'm going to put it into some dollars and, you know, look at property and all the rest of it and, you know, just look at other investments because I know when the bull run is over, it's over. There's going to be a bear market. Bear markets generally don't last for too long. The last one was, you know, it seemed like it was long because people are thinking the bear market didn't end until... Uh, just recently after this halving, it actually ended. So we zoom out. This is where the bear market ended, February 2019. It's been going up ever since. People just aren't going to really think about this. Everyone's going to think, nah, this is where the bear market stopped and this is where we really started to make our moves. Oh, look, if it weren't for Corona, this probably would have already been going up like that anyway. That's just one of those things that happen. But technically, this was the bottom of the bear market right there. So we go from December 7, 18th of December 2017 to the 14th of December 2018. That's a little under a year. That was the bear market. And then it's only been in a bull market ever since. But there has been uh, some hefty corrections. Again, you know, you get all the way up here. This is, you know, people getting a bit excited and then it starts to sell off. Then it starts to make its way back up. But this, you know, affected everybody. It wasn't just this market. It was all markets. So these things can happen. And again, this is a reasonable pullback right here. And that was literally only a week ago. This was a reasonable pullback here. And this was just yesterday. Now, not massive pullbacks, but they are reasonable pullbacks. All right, uh, here we go. What's keeping Bitcoin under 20,000? Bitcoin has been kissing the bottom for 20 of 20,000 for weeks. What's keeping Bitcoin from hitting uh, 20,000? Look, I think it's basically just a bit of uh, a shakeout, really. That's uh, what I see it as. You know, there's some whales and some uh, exchanges that, again, trying to shake out the weekends. They're trying to, you know, build their portfolios and all the rest of it. And that's what I think it is, a, a bit of market manipulation. Uh, nothing too major, though, again, because no, 
there's no big massive corrections at the moment and I just I think there may have been some you know again exchanges and maybe some whales that had a crack at doing that and it just got bought up too quick and now I think they're just making very small moves they're not actually looking to try and dump the market uh, in big ways anymore they just lose too much Bitcoin it's just getting bought up and again we can go over here and we can see it you know like it may have wicked down to here but anything that hits around that kind of seventeen thousand dollar level uh, is getting chewed up oh so quickly and then really now we're more up kind of actually around here so now anything that hits around the eighteen thousand five hundred dollar level uh, it's just getting bought up it, it's not even wicking down that low anymore now don't get me wrong a couple of days time a week's time or whatever this could absolutely go down it's a possibility it's something we need to keep in our mind but I just don't see it happening look possible we come to here yep you know maybe even sort of around here look possible I think unlikely but if we do I think that would be the bottom I don't think there's any chance that we really come down here at the moment again don't take my word for it none of this is financial advice it's just my personal opinion I just think too many people are going to buy it up micro strategy as we saw they're still buying so if it if it somehow made it down to sixteen thousand dollars again I'm confident micro strategy would be buying more I'm confident that uh, Grayscale would be buying more. I'm confident that Sky Ridge uh, would be buying if they haven't already, you know, built their position. There'd just be a number of places that would be buying uh, at that levels. And look, I'll give you the hot tip, but you need to keep this out the down low, all right? I don't want other people knowing. If Bitcoin got down to sixteen thousand dollars, I would buy the backside out of it i would throw the kitchen sink at it right now if it got down to there and look if it got down to fourteen thousand dollars i would beg borrow and steal to buy more bitcoin down here look yeah i don't know what else to say could it go down here definitely absolutely could will it i don't think so I think we're going to bounce around here for a while and look we might even get a sell-off and sort of come down around here uh, you know and sort of take out some of this you know some market manipulation and get back down to around about here where the wicks were and where we've got a little bit of uh, you know consolidation I suppose because again it got to here it was indecision pulled back only a little bit and rocketed up and then again if we kind of you know zoom right out then we can see we've had you know We've been here before back in the day. It was quite a long time ago. So that's my theory. And I've been saying it for a while. And I don't want to sound like a broken record. But I just don't see it going down too low from here. All right. Now we've got over here. Bitcoin price rally uh, at risk as gold and US dollar show signs of recovery. So gold uh, sunk down to around about 1800 I haven't even looked at it. But where are they saying it is now? Uh, so Dan Tapieri, the co-founder of uh, 10T Holdings, said weak hands have been shaken out in the gold market. This raises the probability of a gold rally in the near term, especially as it comes off an 80-day pullback period. Now I did sell my gold. What do you do? I just thought Bitcoin has more upside, and you know I may live to regret that, but we'll wait and see. Uh, Bitcoin has strong momentum in the past three months as it achieved an all-time high on Coinbase. Okay, blah blah blah. Here we go. Very bullish for gold. Largest ever three-week liquidation just occurred. Weak hands cleaned out. $25 billion went into EM equity, much more into US equity. Only $8 billion out of gold. Maybe tiny amount into Bitcoin. BTC, uh, not big enough uh, to be a macro asset class, but coming soon. So yeah, look, I've put my money where my mouth is, and not all my money's in Bitcoin, but I've, you know, I've got 30-something percent of you know my available money into bitcoin uh and then the rest is mixed up into other cryptos uh yeah i don't really have anything else i don't have any savings or anything like that savings just cost you at the moment uh you know we have still positive interest rates here in australia but you know anything under ten thousand is basically getting nothing and anything over ten thousand gets i think uh zero point one five percent or something crazy like that so it's just not worth it all right, another story over here. So this one is interesting. DeFi and ETH2 are whole new convos for regulators, say SEC, excuse me, Hester Pierce. United States SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce wants to focus on new guidance for DeFi and future Ethereum projects. So this is bullish, but look, it's probably going to be a long road. I wouldn't be expecting anything to kind of happen overnight. And, you know, 
unfortunately there probably will be a little bit of a I won't say too much over-regulation, but definitely a bit of over-regulation. That's just generally the way it goes. But, you know, it could be wrong, and maybe they, you know, do just a, the right amount of regulation. Who knows? We'll see. Hester Pierce, Commissioner for the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, explained during an exclusive interview with Cointelegraph that decentralised finance, also known as, known as DeFi, has created new challenges for the SEC. Pierce, nicknamed Crypto Mum for her interest in digital asset innovation, mentioned that the quickly rising DeFi sector has resulted in a number of unresolved legal issues. DeFi has posed a challenge for the SEC in a similar way that the ICO boom did in 2017. What is different here is that the pace of DeFi has actually been much faster. Also, I think that the legal issues are more difficult to sort out on the DeFi side, uh, definitely, and particularly with the decentralized ones. You know, if they have issues with them, you know, who do they go after? How do they stop them? I think uh, that will be an, an issue. I'm not saying impossible, and I don't think they're going to look to crack down on just, you know, any old DeFi project, but I think ones that are maybe a little bit sort of sketchy, uh, they're probably going to uh, find themselves uh, in trouble with the SEC at some stage, I have no doubt. Although Pierce shared that regulations around DeFi projects may fall outside of the SEC's purview, some of these projects will likely touch on securities laws. To Pierce's uh, point, John Wellen, a managing director of Santana Bank and chair of the enterprise Ethereum Alliance, told Toyn Cal... <laughs> Coin Telegraph that from a financial perspective, DeFi has the potential to enable autonomous programmable digital securities in the future. And look, this is where we want to be, where it's all computerized and it's not, you know, there's no kind of central parties that, you know, can manipulate it and all the rest of it. If it's decentralized and just a program that works fairly for everybody, that is what we want. And, and a free market where people get to make their choice if they don't like, you know, I, again, we use the banks, and I hate to, you know, bang on them. But anyway, you know, they've they've been dodgy for a while. If people don't like banks, they, there's yeah, there's an option out there. And you know, for a long time, the option was just another bank, uh, and all banks were, you know, really the same. They were all, you know, working off the same kind of platform and had the same mechanics, and you know, were using the same system. You know, you just you couldn't get out of that. There was no other really second or third option. Now there is another option, and particularly one that, again, if it's all there on the blockchain, uh, and that it is a fair process that you know allows basically everyone to make money and the same kind of money, and you know they just take their tiny little bit of profit. Sweet, that's what we want. We don't want something where there's you know fat cats getting rich and you know just you know basically giving us a few crumbs. That doesn't help the average person. That shouldn't be the way the system is. That makes it so there is uh, you know two classes of society: the rich. And then everybody else, and that's that's a really shitty way uh, for humans, uh, you know, and just any kind of race, you know, to live. We should we should all be, you know, playing off the same field, and we still need innovation. And there's always going to be people that will rise to the top, you know. And I'm not about, you know, getting rid of a system like that. We need people to be, you know, uh, remunerated and rewarded for bringing good stuff, uh, you know. To the population of the world and communities and that but we don't need a system where you know if they do something like that then they just leave the rest of us and it's a system that just continually rewards them and doesn't reward us because the thing we need to remember about innovation and things like that is you can have the greatest world new idea the greatest product in the you know in the world that the world's ever seen it's not worth nothing if we don't buy it we are what's important the people as a collective, not the individuals. The individual does not, you know, kind of uh, rule and steer this ship. As a collective, that's where we are strong. And this is humankind, and I'm preaching a bit here, but it's when we come together, we are at our strongest. We can't just have, you know, these couple of little, you know, few people or even sort of industries that just basically have this massive overarching rule over all of us and a system that keeps them, you know, you know, it keeps us suppressed, really, is what I'm trying to say. That just doesn't work, and we need to move away from that. All right, so I've had a bit of a preach. Uh, I don't want to preach too much. Obviously, it's Saturday evening here. I'm going to go and relax. I might have a drink, watch a movie, spend some time with the family. You know, just the, the good, simple things in life sometimes are the best. All right, 
Stay safe. Be kind to one another. We took a little bit, a little bit of a loss yesterday, but we're starting to make them back. So hopefully you're still on that game train. And I'll see you next time.